Welcome to our live broadcast service from Moma Free Presbyterian Church. We are delighted to have you with us again this morning and we look to the Lord to bless our time together. We appreciate all of the comments and the messages and we thank you for the encouraging notes that you send through for us. Today's service is a little different in that this is our children's day service and the boys and girls from our Sunday school will be taking part. Mr. Chris Killen, one of our missionaries, is bringing the Lord's word today. These have all been pre-recorded and I'm sure they'll be a blessing to your heart and to your soul. We do thank the children, we thank parents and Sunday school teachers and our superintendent for making this possible for us today. As always, feel free to let us know you're watching and encourage others to watch as well. As we commence today, we're going to turn to Psalm 46, just continuing where we are in reading through the book of Psalms. Psalm 46 and verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her in that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Come behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts for Jesus' sake. We're going to turn to a hymn. It's hymn number 690. In the children's section of our hymn book, Jesus bids us shine with a pure, clear light, like a little candle burning in the night. Hymn number 690. Let's unite our hearts together in a word of prayer and we'll seek the Lord at the throne of grace. Our gracious God and our eternal Father in heaven, we draw nigh to thee today in our Saviour's precious name. We thank thee for thy grace and mercy that finds us on another Sabbath day. We thank thee for thy word that we've read. And Lord, we pray today that thou would help us to be still and know that thou art God. Do we pray for thy grace to be upon us today, that Lord, in all our thinking and all our reading of scripture and all our praise we would exalt thy great and holy name we thank thee today for the lord jesus christ on this first day of the week reminding us that he has risen from the dead and lord we thank thee today that christ is the glorious savior 
the Lamb at the throne, the Lamb on the throne, the Lamb before the throne. And we bless thee today for the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank thee for this special Children's Day. We thank the Lord for the boys and girls in our Sunday school and for all who will take part today. We thank thee for them. We thank thee for our, our Sunday school teachers and for all who work uh, with the boys and girls week by week in our congregation. And Lord, we pray today that thy blessing would be upon them, that I would help each one. And even as they would worship from home, that Lord, thy blessing would rest upon them. We thank thee for our brother Chris Killen too, and for all the work that you enable him to be involved in and engaged in for the extension of thy kingdom. Keep him in health and strength. Continue, Lord, to use him and bless him at this time. We pray for our nation. We ask, Lord, that would turn this nation from its sin unto Christ. And we think of those who are not saved, that are known to us, that, Lord, even today thou would save them by thy grace, that they would come to know the Saviour as their own and personal Saviour. And, Lord, even today that they would have the joy of sins forgiven. So we do commit our way to thee, put thy blessing upon every part of this service. We pray that the technology will run smoothly. Lord, the word will be a blessing. The pieces that are sung and the scripture that is recited would be a blessing to our hearts as well. Bring glory to thy name. Help us throughout this Sabbath day to remember thee. And Lord, put thy hand upon us for good. We pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. The Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, and Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Songs of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk. Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. The books of the New Testament are Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippines, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st and 2nd 3rd John, Jude, Revelation. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, but lay on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Let the ones to him belong.
they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of the dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And, then, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our inequities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned each one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him iniquity of us all. <laughs> Did you ever talk to God? Oh, Bob, tell him that you need a friend to love, pray in Jesus' name, baby. You have good answers, pray. Have you told him all your prayers? And what's with a tiny little fear? He knows you can and he'll always hear. And he will answer prayer. You can whisper him a cry to him. You can cry when you're alone to him. You don't have to cry out loud to him. He knows your thoughts. On a lofty mountain peak, he's there in a night of bright stream. He's there and a way on a figure. He's been there from the start. Finally answering his word. It's true, don't be strong because he works with you by his faith and wash your chin. You take God and search God. John chapter 10 verses 1 to 7. Verdy, verdy, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold but climbeth up. Some other way, the, the same as a thief and, and a robber. But he, he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep to him. The porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them, them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them um, and the sheep. Follow him for for they know his voice, and a stranger will, will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they stood under, they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them, Again, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Psalm 40, verses 1 to 8. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God, Many shall see it and fear and so trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust and respecteth not the proud nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done and thy thoughts which are to us word they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire, thy ears hast thou opened, burnt offering and sin offering thou hast not required. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God, yea, thy law is within my heart.
Every sin deserveth God's wrath and curse, both in this life and that which is to come. What does God require of us that we may escape his wrath and curse due to us for sin? To escape the wrath and curse of God due to us for sin, God requires of us faith in Jesus Christ, repentance unto life with the diligent use of all the outward means whereby Christ communicates to us the benefits of redemption. What is faith in Jesus Christ? Faith in Jesus Christ is a saving grace whereby we receive and rest upon him alone for salvation as it is offered to us in the gospel. What is repentance unto life? Repentance unto life is a saving grace whereby a sinner out of a true sense of his sin and apprehension of the mercy of God in Christ doth with grief and hatred of his sin turn from it unto God with full purpose of and endeavours after new obedience. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, 25 and 26. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was it the fall of it. And it came to pass, when Jesus had entered these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel, Lord, to give up by the effort. You are my
in Psalm 119, verse 9 to 16. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? With, with my whole heart have I sought thee. O oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies, as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts, and with respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Who was the first man? Adam. Who was the first woman? Eve. Of what was Adam made? The dust of the ground. Where did God put Adam after he made him? The garden of Eden. What sin did Adam and Eve commit there? They ate the four beginning fruit. How were they punished? They were doomed to sorrow, toil, what promise did God give them before driving them from the garden? The promise of a saviour. Who was Adam and Eve's eldest son? Cain. What was he? The teller of the ground. Who was their second son? Abel. What was he? The keeper of the sheep. What did Cain do to Abel? He killed him.
Well, thank you to all the boys and girls who have taken part in our special service today. We appreciate all of the pre-recordings, all the work at home, getting ready for this service today. It's excellent and a great blessing. We pray the Lord will bless you and bless all who have been watching in. The Lord will write those words upon every heart for his own glory. Let me thank the, the parents as well. No easy task, I know, preparing for Children's Day this year, so different from every other year. And we thank you for taking time to record and get those recordings into us. And we thank David for putting them all together and preparing the programme and the broadcast for today. Let me thank our Sunday School teachers uh, week by week. I know the last few months have been so different than normal, but we do thank you for your labour and your love for the boys and girls. And we do pray that even in these unusual times, the Lord will bless you and be with you in a very special way. We thank David for superintending the Sunday School and also for putting things right on the computer this week for us with the program. So a sincere word of thanks to all who have been involved and we do ask the Lord will bless it to our hearts for Jesus' sake. Hopefully we won't have to wait too much longer till we have boys and girls back with us again in our services. So let me encourage you to pray to that end and may the Lord meet us at the very point of our need. Again, welcome to those who have joined with us. If you've just tuned in, you're very welcome in the Saviour's name. You've come to Oma Free Presbyterian Church's live broadcast on Facebook and YouTube. This is our Children's Day Sunday, and the boys and girls from our Sunday school have been taking part, taking part from home, but we thank them nonetheless for that. Tonight at 7.30, we have our evening service. We do encourage you to come back and join with us live on Facebook and on YouTube for that service at 7.30 tonight. Wednesday 8 o'clock is our prayer meeting via Zoom and you're welcome to join in with that. If you'd like to be part of that, uh, do send us details and we'll send the access details to you for the Zoom prayer meeting. Thursday night, uh, conversations with the minister will continue. So remember that live on Facebook and YouTube as we think again about the matters relating to the Word of God and the Christian life. FPC Kids on Friday night at 7 o'clock for the boys and girls, again live on Facebook. So boys and girls, make sure you tune in for that and take time to watch those little programmes. Next Lord's Day, 12 noon and 7.30 in the will of God. Uh, do remember those services and continue to pray for the preaching of his word. do want to thank you again for your tithes and offerings and gifts for the Lord's work. It's very much appreciated during these days of lockdown. And we do pray the Lord will bless you as you have sought to be a blessing in this way. After the next hymn, I'm going to hand over to Mr. Chris Killen. Mr. Killen is a missionary under our mission board. And we are delighted that he's been able to participate in our service today. So Chris will come straight after the hymn and he will bring the Lord's message to the boys and girls. and girls, mums and dads and to everyone who's joining with us this special Children's Day service. 
I would like to thank the Reverend Mercer for the opportunity to speak to the children and to bring God's word. In Psalm 119 and the verse 11 we read, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And boys and girls, just as we come to the word now, just going to bow very briefly in prayer and ask for God's blessing upon his truth. Heavenly Father, we thank thee for thy precious word and we ask that you'll speak to each and every one of our hearts, speak to the boys and girls in their various homes and to the mums and dads, to everyone who's listening. We pray that we might know thy blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm sure that many of the boys and girls have got a pet animal. Perhaps you've got a cat, a hamster, a tortoise some other pet animal that you really love and you look after and you care for. Well, last year, our family, we got a pet as well. I wonder, can you guess what sort of an animal we got? Well, we got an eight week old puppy and he's called Ruger. And I'm sure that the boys and girls, you'd love to see our puppy. So I'm gonna go and get him and bring him in to let you see him. So here he is, boys and girls, here's Ruger. Ruger, come on in. Good boy. Of course, Ruger's not eight weeks old anymore. He's now a nine month old puppy. Oh, by the way, boys and girls, don't be telling my wife that he's in the front room because he's not allowed in this room here. Now, there are lots of different types of dogs and breeds and I've got some with me here. I wonder, can you guess what breed of dog this is? Well, this is a cockapoo and we're going to call him Bailey because I know a very lovely Bailey He's a cockapoo and he's lovely and friendly and he's a great pet. And then here's another one. Can you guess this one? Well, this is just like Ruger. This is a German Shepherd. And some dogs, boys and girls, are used for um, military use or they're used by the police or they're even used as service dogs. Here's another one. Can you guess this breed of dog? Well, this one here is a Husky. And Huskies, of course, are used for pulling stairs. I'm just going to set uh, Henry the Husky here. And here's another type of dog. We'll just set this one here. Boys and girls, you think of dogs and how they're used. For instance, uh, guide dogs to help with, with people who are blind and what a great use they have. And, and perhaps you live on a farm and you've got a, a collie, you've got a sheep dog. So dogs have lots of different types of uses. Dogs have an incredible sense of smell. In fact, some dogs, such as hounds, have up to 300 million scent receptors in their nose. Did you know that when a dog is drinking, its tongue actually goes backwards as it's gathering up the water, as you'll see from the video? Now, we read about dogs in the Bible. In fact, there are quite a number of verses and portions that mention dogs, and there are some great lessons, boys and girls, that we can learn. For instance, in the Old Testament, in the book of Proverbs and the chapter 26, we read in, let me see the verse 17, he that passeth by and meddleth with strife belonging not to him is like one that taketh a dog by the ears. Now, you would not want to grab a dog by the ears because if you did that, I will guarantee you're probably going to get bit. And so the proverb is there teaching us that we shouldn't meddle in other people's business. When there's arguments and there's problems and there's strife, we should just stay out of it. And if we do get involved, well, we're probably going to end up just like grabbing a dog by the ears. We're going to get bit. We're going to get hurt. Then in the New Testament, we read the story about the rich man and Lazarus. We read about that in Luke chapter 16. And boys and girls, we were told there about a rich man who had plenty of money. He had very fine clothes, but sadly and tragically, he didn't know the Lord and he wasn't saved and he died in his sins and went to hell. But we also read there about a beggar and he was called Lazarus. Lazarus lay at the gate of the rich man and his whole body was covered in sores and he was very hungry. In fact, we read in the verse 21, and desiring to be fed 
with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Now, the rich man wasn't willing to show him any sort of love or compassion or give him any food. But here was the, were the dogs and they came and they licked the sores that were on Lazarus's body. And even the dogs there, they, they teach us about love and compassion. And even those animals had some sort of love for Lazarus. Boys and girls, what a great lesson. In fact, there are lots of lessons that we can learn from the Bible about dogs. And today we're going to consider just some simple lessons from dogs. I'm going to use some words today and highlight them just to help us with the Bible lesson. And the first word is owner. Going back just a couple of years ago, we were on holiday and we went to visit some friends of ours, George and Jody, and they breed German Shepherd dogs. Well, George said to Josiah, myself and to Linda, would you like to come in and see the puppies? Um, we went in and we seen the most beautiful, gorgeous little German Shepherd puppies. And from that very moment, my son Josiah in particular wanted to get a dog and it had to be a German Shepherd. And he went on about it and he kept asking, even over the space of about the next year, Dad, please can we get a dog? So we agreed to get him a puppy. I remember the day well, whenever we went to see the puppies for the first time and Josiah actually got to pick one of the puppies from the litter. So he chose a puppy. And that reminds us boys and girls about God's love for us. We read in the Bible where the Lord Jesus said, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. So the day came whenever we went to pick up our new puppy. Of course, before that, we made preparation, bought a dog collar, a lead, a bowl, a bed, and all the things that a young puppy would need. I remember the excitement as Josiah and myself headed off that day to collect our new dog. And Josiah got the little puppy, gathered it up in his arms, put a blanket around him, called him Ruger, got him into the car, and then I had, of course, to pay for him and to purchase the dog. And I gave the money, and that day the dog became ours. Maybe you have an animal, and you would say, well, that cat, that dog, that rabbit, it belongs to me, it's mine. And I want to ask you a question. Do you belong to the Lord? Do you know and love the Lord? In Mark chapter 7, we read the story of the Syrophoenician woman. This woman had a daughter who was very sick. And so she came to the Lord Jesus Christ to ask him that he would heal her daughter. Now the Lord Jesus had come, first of all, to bring the good news of the gospel to the Jewish people. Well, boys and girls, this Syrophoenician woman was just like you and me. She was a Gentile, a non-Jew. And yet the Lord Jesus commended her for the faith that she had because she believed that the Lord Jesus was able to heal her daughter and to raise her up. In those days, oftentimes, dog would have gathered underneath the table waiting for some crumbs to fall from its master's table and just to get some scraps. And no one here speaking to the Lord actually said to him, the dogs eat of the children's crumbs. In other words, Lord, you can show me some small mercy. Even something from your table will be enough to heal my daughter and to make her whole. What great faith she displayed. I wonder, is your faith in the Lord? Do you trust in the Lord? Do you know the Lord? Do you belong to him? The second word that I want to use today for our lesson is the word obedience. Whenever our new puppy came home for Ruger, there were lots of new sights and smells and sounds in our house. And from that time, he's been learning lots of new things. Now, I don't pretend to be any sort of a dog trainer at all. In fact, boys and girls, I'm just learning as I go along. But one of the things that I have learned is that there are some very important things that you need to teach a new puppy. In fact, I'm going to just mention three important things that you need to teach a dog. 
The first thing that you will want to teach your dog is the recall. In other words, you want to call the dog and have it come back to you. That's primarily, first of all, for the dog's own safety. Years ago, we had a dog and it got off the lead. And I remember calling, it was called Honey. And I said, Honey, Honey, come here. And I held my hands over my eyes and I was picking out because Honey ran in front of a car. Thankfully, the car didn't hit the dog, but she was very nearly seriously hurt. And so you want the dog to come back for its own safety. Now, whenever I call Ruger back to me, he gets a treat and he gets a reward. And so he associates good things when he comes back to me. Do you know that God calls us all to himself? He calls us to submit to him and to follow him. In fact, everything good comes from the hand of our God. Maybe you haven't been following the Lord the way you used to. Maybe you're following afar off. It's been some time since you read your Bible or prayed. Boys and girls, God called you to follow him. He called you back to him. And I wonder, will you respond? Will you run back to your heavenly father? The second command you'll want to teach a puppy is the stay command. You do want the dog to move. Once again, this is so that the puppy or the dog will remain and be safe. Now, in the Bible, we read in Psalm 46, verse 10, where God says, Be still and know that I am God. And God calls us all just to stop, just to stay, to be still and to think about who he is. He is the almighty God, the creator God. And of course, we are sinners in need of God's salvation. And so the Lord calls us to stop and to think about that and to think of our need to trust him and to follow him and to submit to him. The third important thing that you will want to teach your dog is the leave it command. Just leave it. Don't touch it. And so for Ruger, I've been teaching him how to leave certain things, not to take it. Of course, that's to protect the dog. You don't want the, the dog to eat something that's going to harm it or maybe even poison it. And it's for its own safety. Now, boys and girls, I've certainly been learning over the past number of months in particular, the need just to be patient and to go over and over and over the commands to repeat them. Uh, and it's speaking, I'm speaking really about the need for repetition. In fact, we read in Psalm 119 and the verse 11, Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. And God wants us to leave certain things, certain sinful things, certain sinful practices, not to do those things, but to follow him, to, to submit to him. And so we need to memorize scripture, need to learn scripture. And of course that takes time. And so you've got to be patient and learn the verses. And even during this time of lockdown, you've got great opportunity just to learn these verses and to submit them and to commit them to your memory. So boys and girls, Ruger knows a number of commands. For instance, uh, the recall. Ruger, come. Good boy. Good boy. Ash. Ruger, stay. He also knows how to wait and to stay in place. And then Ruger, plus. Leave it. So I thought, boys and girls, how that a dog has an owner. It's been purchased. And we've also seen the need for obedience. And the dog has to be instructed and taught, wanted to be well disciplined. But the third word I want us to look at in closing today is the word opportunity. You see, over the incoming months, as our puppy dog grows and develops and as it gets older, there is an opportunity to train it and for it to become more obedient and to learn many more new things. As a young Christian boy or girl, there is a great opportunity that God has given you to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I wonder, do you have that desire? Do you have that heart to really follow the Lord, to live for the Lord, to tell others about the Lord Jesus Christ? Boys and girls, there's nothing more important than reading your Bible, than praying, than and growing in grace. What a great time of opportunity.
But there's also an opportunity given to those who don't know the Lord Jesus as their own personal saviour. I want to read some verses found in the book of Isaiah chapter 56 and we read here about the leaders in Israel at that particular time. It says about these leaders in verse 10, his watchmen are blind, they are all ignorant, they are all dumb dogs, they cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber, yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough. And here the Lord was speaking about the leaders, the spiritual, the religious leaders at that time. Sadly, they didn't know or love the Lord or follow him. In fact, they were just like a dog that was lying sleeping. Can you imagine a guard dog that was fast asleep, that didn't bark, that didn't alert its owner to the danger or to someone coming? Well, that's just like the spiritual leaders at that time. They didn't warn the people. You need to prepare to meet God. God is holy. We are sinful. We need to be saved. They didn't do that, boys and girls. And so they were just like dumb dogs. More than that, they were also very greedy. They were selfish. They only thought about themselves. I wonder, is that a picture of your life today? You've got room for many things. You've got room in your heart for pleasure, for family, for friends. And yet, sadly, there's no time or there's no place for the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, today you have a great opportunity to be saved, to come to know the Lord and to be ready to meet him. Now, I'm sure if you have an animal, you would say, well, I, I love my animal. I love my pet. Well, we're very fond of our dog. But at the end of the day, we have to be reminded that it is just a dog. It is an animal. It's not like you and me, because the Bible tells us that you and I are distinct and we're different from the rest of God's creation because man has a soul. We were made in the image of God. In fact, the Bible tells us not only are we special, but we are precious to God. So precious that God sent forth his son into the world. You see, the Bible reminds us about the fact that we have a sin problem, a sinful nature. We are sinners. God is holy. Our sin has separated us from God. But God sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, into the world to save us from our sins, to pay the price and the penalty of our sins. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I wonder, do you realise just how special and precious you are to God this day? Now tell me, do you know the Lord? Are you following him? Are you walking in his ways? Are you living in obedience to your creator God? I trust and I pray that this day that you will follow the Lord. We're just going to close now in a brief word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank thee for the lessons, these simple lessons that we've been learning this day. And we pray that you will speak on to our hearts. We pray that more and more that we might learn more about the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to thank you today for the gift of thy Son. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. We pray the blessing of God upon each and every head bowed in thy presence. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.